Today we're building some of the most important stock filter that you will need to find the best stock to trade each day and all of this using TWS free stock scanner. Before getting the video, a quick reminder that all the best tools I personally use to trade will be linked in the description. Don't forget to check that out. Let's get right in. So let's first go over the difference between the two scanner that we have in TWS. So you have the scanner, which is the mosaic, this one over here, and you have the advanced. This is the advanced. This is the mosaic. Both of them have different resources reason or different purpose to use them over here we can see we can create top gainer top loser most active but there's also some other stuff that are quite specific to this one so if you're looking for high three minute volume so stock that are moving with certain volume within three minutes this one is going to be better so more like impulsive spike move or if you're looking for very specific imbalance trade this is going to be the one so this one is nice for certain things but for most of the time i prefer this one there's also some Something that is very specific to the advanced one versus the other one one that you're seeing which is the standard one you can create yourself different column for different type of scanner which when you're using the other one over here what's going to happen is that all your scanner are going to need to have the same exact column so let's take an example volume greater than a million and also if you're using this one something that is important to do is just go over here and put like a limit of 10 which is normally good enough or even top 20 20 this allows you to create some filter that are pretty loose but only show the top 20 which is really ideal because sometimes you want to see the top gainer with x amount of volume but you don't want to update your filter intraday so this is always going to show you just the top 20 which is normally going to be totally fine or top 10 depending on the filter that you're looking for so over here we have one and then we'll just open another one just to show the example that i'm trying to say so advanced market scanner and now we're going to have both of these scanners so we're going to make them smaller just to fit the screen if you're looking for stocks that are getting halted you don't want to see um, maybe percentage change or market cap or stuff like that so if i go and remove this one so if I go delete market cap, it's also going to delete it from this one over here. So let's delete volume It's going to delete on both. So you're not able to really have um, a separate column for different information that you want to see, which is something that you're able to do when you're using this one. So the other one is really good for specific stuff like imbalances and all this, like very more customizable stuff that you're never going to change like the column and stuff like that. This scanners over here, I really like them because I can customize them differently if i want to edit this one and add some kind of value so let's put a reference price over here it's going to have it to this one something also when you're using the basic one like this you're not going to be able to see float or market cap that was a question that someone asked in the comment section of the previous video what about float and market cap and all that stuff when it comes to float data something that is important and also different depending on the platform that you're using but most service give you float data but it's really really not accurate so sometimes it's confusing or it's worse than not having it and i believe that's why tws is not showing the float data so example uh shares what's the float of a stock but it's going to show you the market cap because the market cap is easy to calculate but on these really small cap company they're diluting they're doing some split and all this so all data on most platforms form is just wrong so i personally use market cap 99 or 98 percent of the time it's very rare that i check the float because for example we have this stock nuze or mtem we can see that the market cap is 6.71 million i don't really need to see the float i can just know that i have a couple buddy that can just buy the whole stock if they want so no matter what it's going to be highly volatile and it's probably something that i wouldn't want to be short so having the float even if it shows you 700k what's the difference between 6.7 1 million market cap and 700k float you know no matter what that this thing is super thinly traded and you have to be careful because like we see over here it can get halted by the way if you enjoyed the video so far don't forget to like subscribe i also did link all the best tools for day trading and investing in the description don't forget to check that out let's get back to the video so that being said one of the most important scanner that you need to have if you're looking to be an active trader is going to be a halt scanner so tws even if you don't have live data is gonna allow you to have a real-time live scanner i don't know really how it happens or why or maybe it's a mistake or not hopefully it's not but i've been using it without having the live data in tws because i use dash trader for my active trading but 
I really like the feature of the health scanner over here. And the only thing I don't have on this is the imbalance and the reference price. So to create a health scanner, just go over here and just go into the mosaic scanner. And what you're going to need to do is just go create over here, create custom scan and just type over here maybe halt let's just put a dollar sign so i know which one is which and just click next and then you can i leave some stuff but i like to remove the change uh, dollar percent dollar and just keep the change percent and over here the fill that you need to add is going to be halt so over here halted and over here what you need to do is just click filter and just say halted field and create volume and then I just click filter and then I'm going to say greater than 50k. And the reason why is a lot of times stocks get halted when there's news. And if you have too much of a volume filter, you're not going to catch these one. So it's important to just not put too much volume, but put enough. Otherwise, some stuff that are trading two, three thousand shares a day are just going to pop up on your scan. It's going to get quite annoying or distracting just to see a bunch of tickers that are not really doing much. So some of the stuff that are important, we can see over here, I have a last dollar and this one is last. What you really, really need to do, this is the most important thing that you need. If you don't do this, I promise you, you're gonna lose money. Over here, you absolutely need to change this last column. If you don't, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna click over here and it's gonna send an order to buy. For example, I go over here and I'm gonna click buy and next thing you know, I get an order here that is said that it bought some shares. So this is a problem. So this is why you need to change it. If we go back over here, what you need to do is go edit scanner and then remove last and put over here, go last and put a last dollar. This is the one that you need. Then just click done and you can just move it back over here to move last dollar also is you can see that every time you're going to move stuff around it's going to change your column size and it's going to be a bit annoying so right click this and just say set current width as max do it for all the column there so that just means that whenever you create something or you create some kind of size like this it's not going to move so you can actually move stuff around and it doesn't change the actual size. So now let's talk about what I have on mine. So what I have is trade time. Trade time is going to be the last trade time of the stock. So this means when the stock got halted. Really important because normally halt are going to be 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and it's going to keep on going. So you can know depending on the time over here when it's going to open back up because you just do the math. 14.04, so it's going to be 14.09 and 21. That's when the stock is going to open. And also you have the imbalance number. I don't need to have it on this one over here because I do have market data in my DAS and it's going to show me that. So we can see that now the last price was this price over here. So it was the 116 and the reference price. So reference price. So if we put it a bit bigger, you're going to be able to see the full name. It's going to be the price that the stock is going to be opening back up. So this is important when you're trading. If you're in a halt, you want to know where the stock is going to open. You just you don't want to just guess because maybe it's going to open down. It's going to open really up. So you want to be preparing to sell or maybe take profit or so on and so forth. Something also if a stock is trading on Nasdaq, you cannot put an order out on the stock when it's halted except if you use nasdaq if the stock is trading on nysc you cannot send orders when the stock is halted unless you use nysc if the stock is trading on amex you need to send order on amex while the stock is halted otherwise you cannot participate in the auction so that means that you cannot send orders out when the stock is halted you need to put orders or send orders on the current exchange that the stock is trading so right now what i have on screen is halted stock and i have small cap gainers small cap loser and large cap losers i remove one screen so i can rebuild it and show how i would go about customizing everything so i would just go here mosaic market scanner and then i would just create new and i would just go lc for large cap and then I would go gainers and then I would just click next and what I would do over here is you can go and select the stock universe normally what I look for is stock US NYC Amex Arca uh, Nasdaq national market and all Nasdaq small cap market bats 
I remove pink sheet because I don't trade pink sheet OTC. If you do trade OTC, you can actually add it, but I personally don't. So this is what I have. Then I would just go over here, field. I remove this over here. Then I would just add volume. I would also add market cap. And the last one I would add is volume three. So short term volume three minute. The next thing you would want to do right away before you start buying some stuff by mistake is just go into edit scanner and just remove this over here and just say add field and go last in term of dollar. So when this is done, uh, now you're pretty much set to go and let's just add some value. So market cap, when I say large cap, it's just large cap for me. So anything above 500 million. And then I'll just put like a really, really big uh, value over here just to make sure that it never gets to that kind of value. So just that means just unlimited. I'll do last. I don't put a price and then volume. I'll put a filter. Let's do 5 million. And then what I'll do is I'll just click on filter. I'll just put 4% to unlimited change percentage over here like this. And what you need to do is also just unlock this so you can have it so you can squeeze it in your screen over here. So what is this over here? The ST volume three is pretty important for me. Um, I look at stock that are really doing volume right now. So the last three minutes that are trading the most volume. So it's going to show me what's really moving in terms of stock. Or I can look at this one and say that, all right, this one is really doing a lot of volume. So right now it's selling off. So it's trading a bit more volume in the past three minutes than the other one. Because if you just look at the gainers, sometimes stock is really gapping up or moving a lot, but it's not really doing anything at the moment. So I like to look at stuff in terms of volume for the past three minutes. So it's going to show me stuff that is actually moving at the moment versus stuff that is just up. Some other little things I like to do is just go over here into the last and say format last column and remove the dynamic color. So a bit less flash on your chart or on your screen. I do the same thing for all of them. And after you can just click to save it. And now you have at least your large cap gainer, large cap loser. So the way I like to split things is just above 500 million and below. Below 500 million is often just going to be a very small cap, kind of like shady company. Above, it starts to be real company. So you want to maybe trade them a little differently and expect a bit less volatility unless there's some crazy, crazy volume. So this is just a way of splitting them. And it's always going to be a 4% or 10% for small cap. So large cap 4%, small cap 10%. I don't really trade these small cap losers because they're not pricey enough to really get short them or it's just very like, I'm not going to short something that is like 60 cent or 10 cent or 15 cent. It just doesn't make sense um, reward wise versus how much you can lose if something really weird happened. So now that you created your layout, this is what I really like to have. Halt scan, top gainer, top loser. These are going to be my main one that I always go through. I tried to add like a bunch of different one, but I always end up pretty much just using top gainer, top loser and halted. So when this is done, what I like to do is just go at the bottom and just create a copy. So copy tab. So you copy it and then you have one for your intraday and do the same thing for your pre-market over here. And because now you have a layout, you're able to kind of start customizing. So maybe for pre-market, you don't want to see this one. So you can start removing this one and give yourself maybe more space for some other stuff. I normally going to have one for pre-market, intraday and post market. When it comes to post market, there's something that's going to be different. We're going to use what I already have over here, but we're going to go into edit scanner. And instead of change, you can leave a certain change percent, but I like to look at post market change. So let's go like this. And then it's going to be after hour change percent. So you can go filter and say, I want stock that are up at least 4% in the post market. Now it's not going to show you anything because it doesn't really make sense. The market is still open, but what you will need to do, just do this. And after that volume, you want to change it, right? So maybe let's put a uh, hundred K. So just something that it's breaking out on news. So anything above 100K, I would have one set for pre-market. Then I would have one set for intraday. And then I would have one set for after hour. So this is how I kind of go through everything. So then it's going to be saved. Then I just scroll through the layout whenever it's pre-market and post-market. So if you wanted to add one other filter that I think it's pretty useful, if you go to the advanced one, so advanced market scanner, and I like to look for closest to limit up and down. So then I just put um, something like 100K uh, in terms of volume. 
then I just add a, a search actually. This one is gonna show you really what you wanna see in terms of volatility. So if something is very close to being halted, so right now we do have one ticker, we can see that it's gonna show you really like, okay, this one could get halted very soon. So that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe, and I did link all the best tools for day trading and investing in the description.